Hey guys, Brian Kelly here from Zombie Guitar. If you've never heard of Zombie Guitar before, that is a website that has been helping tens and thousands of guitar players to become better musicians in a very short amount of time. So if you haven't yet checked out zombieguitar.com, stop by, check it out. You might like it. So uh, with that said, today's video is going to be about the cage system and uncomplicating the system. So many people complicate the cage system, so many people are confused by it. So many people um, are just misinformed in general. I see this day after day after day. It's been going on for years and years and years. I've made a bunch of videos about this before. So first of all, I did make a super comprehensive video about the cage system. It's 45 minutes long. I'll post a link to that below. That's like the ultimate caged lesson. All right, so uh, make sure you watch that one so you actually understand the ins and outs of the system. This video is just about clearing up the misconceptions. So the three misconceptions that there are surrounding the cage system is number one, people think that it is a means of connecting scale patterns together. So like they're stuck playing in like this simple pentatonic position number one box or something like that and they're trying to figure out how to expand so they can play up and down the entire neck of the guitar in one single key. People will say, oh, you have to learn the cage system to help you with that. No. The cage system is not about connecting scale patterns together. It is about chord shapes. All right? That is the number one most common misconception I see all the time. Number two, the other misconception, people talk about dividing the fretboard up into five different positions, and they call each of the positions the C position, the A position, G, E, and D positions. Again, that is not the cage system. That's just unnecessary confusion. Like, why are they saying that? When you hear the five positions, all they're talking about is the five pentatonic positions. That's it. The five pentatonic positions are the five different positions for whatever key you happen to be playing in. And then you can add notes to each of those pentatonic positions to create the full diatonic scale, otherwise known as the major scale, otherwise known as the natural minor scale. That's the, the pentatonic positions. That's the five positions thing. It's not the cage system, all right? So this is where people are getting confused at. But that's not what today's video is about. Today's video is about number three, the number three misconception. This is people that actually understand the system. They understand that the cage system is about chord shapes. And they, they'll, they'll play something like the G shape, for example. They're like, all right, well, I understand the cage system. I'm playing this chord in the G shape right here, but I can't play this shape. This is really hard to play. It hurts my fingers. I can't stretch my fingers that far. When am I ever going to use this shape, you know? That's the third thing. The third misconception is that you have to play these cage shapes in full all the time. And that is absolutely not true. That's not what the cage system is about. It is just a way of outlining the, the, the notes for any given chord on any given spot on the fretboard. Stick around, watch this lesson. I promise you this is going to make more sense if it's not yet making sense. Let's get into it. All right, so we're just going to look at an E major chord for this lesson. So you probably already know what an E major chord is when you see it like this. All right, so that is an E major chord, and that is known as the E shape. According to the cage system, there's five shapes. There's the C shape, A, G, E, and D shape. So this is the E shape. So it's named after the fact that an open E chord is found in the shape. So you can play the same E major chord. You can come up to the 12th fret and play it like this, and that's still the E shape. It's still an E major chord. It's in the E shape. All right, so you see how that's the same thing? You see my second, third, and fourth finger, what they're doing here. I can slide this whole thing down and basically play the exact same shape there, but then I don't need to use my first finger to bar the strings anymore because the open strings are taking care of that. So that's why this is considered the E shape. So in non-caged speak, this is just referred to as... A, a bar chord, a major bar chord rooted on the low E string. So another common chord shape that you're probably familiar with already is the A shape. So again, we're going to use the E major chord as our example here, and we're going to play the E major chord in the A shape. So that looks like this. So you've probably seen that already before. In non-caged speak, that's just referred to as a bar chord. It's a major bar chord. It has its root on the A string. The reason it's called the A shape when we're referring to the cage system is if you look at these three strings right here, you see how these three notes are all fretted on the same fret. And then you have, you know, a note here and a note up here. All of this together makes this chord. Well, you could take this whole shape and essentially slide it down like that. 
that's an A chord. It's an open A chord. So that's where this shape gets its name from. That's all the cage system is. So in today's lesson, we're going to talk about the G shape. All right, so I'm choosing the shape because I want to talk about that third misconception here where people say, well, the G shape is super hard to play. I can't stretch my fingers that far. When am I ever going to use the G shape? All right, so first of all, let's look at what this G shape is. So an E major chord in the G shape looks like this. All right. It's kind of tricky here, but um, you see that the lowest note of this chord right here happens to be the note E. It's found right there on the uh, 12th fret of the low E string. So you have all your chord tones of the E major chord. All right, so you see that shape right there? That's the exact same thing as coming all the way down here and playing an open G chord. It's just that you would have to rearrange your fingers and place a bar out there with your first finger if you wanted to slide the shape further up the neck, which is exactly what we're doing. All right, it's the same shape right here. If you wanted to play a B chord in the in the G shape, you just start on your note B right there. There's the seventh fret of the low E string. You play that same shape. If you wanted to play an A chord in this G shape, you just start on the note A, which is right there, fifth fret of the low E string, and you apply this shape. So that's how this stuff works. So are you ever going to play that shape in full? Probably not. Maybe you will, but most likely you're not going to. But let's actually look at what we can actually do with this information. All right, so what can we do with this information? What can we do with the fact that we know that there's an E major chord found in the G shape right here? What can we actually do with this? Well, we can play an E major chord. That's it. That's it. That's the cage system in a nutshell. That's what the cage system allows you to do. You can play an E chord here, right? You can play an E chord up here, right, using this shape. You can play an E chord here using this shape. Well, you can also play an E major chord using this shape, too. It's just the same notes. An E major chord is the notes E, G sharp, and B. So when you play an E chord like this, you're just playing the notes E, G sharp, and B. Those notes are repeated more than once since you're playing them across six strings, but you're just playing the notes E, G sharp, and B. You're just happening to be using this shape. Again, it's the notes E, G sharp, and B. You're just using the shape. It's the notes E, G, sharp, and B. You're just using the shape. It's just the notes E, G, sharp, and B. You're just using the shape. So this allows you another way to play the E major chord. So instead of hurting myself and playing this chord like this using the full six string shape, maybe I just want to focus on the low three strings. So I might just want to do this. That's an E major chord. I'm playing the notes E, G, sharp, and B. Maybe I want to uh, play, I just want to kind of bar those three strings. So here's your E, here's your G sharp, here's your B. So maybe I just want to play this chord like this. Again, that's an E major chord. Maybe I want to uh, get a little bit of a different voicing in here, and I want to take my pinky, and I want to put it up here on the uh, 12th fret of the high E string. So I'm gonna keep my first finger there and I'm also gonna put my pinky there. It's gonna give it like a higher voicing. I'm still just playing the same three notes. I have my E, G sharp, and B on these three strings and then I, I'm just adding in a high E up here, so. All right, so maybe I wanna slide from, it, the, the actual starting note isn't super important, but the, the destination note is going to be the 11th fret of the A string right here. So maybe I want to slide to that note, and then I kind of want to grab these three notes, which we already know are the three notes, E, G, sharp, and B. So maybe I want to do something like this. So right there, I slid from fret 9 to fret 11, but maybe I want to slide from fret 10 to fret 11. Or maybe I want to slide from fret 7 to fret 11. It doesn't really matter where I'm starting the slide at. It just matters that I'm ending up on fret 11, which is one of the notes of this E major chord in this G shape. And then I'm finishing it because I have these three strings barred with my first finger. So these are all just different variations of an E major chord. All right, so... E, G, sharp, and B. That's literally all the cage system is for. It's just like, okay, here's an E major chord in the G shape. There's your notes. Now do what you want with it. So we can take this a step further and we can play other types of chords aside from a major chord. So, so far we looked at how to play an E major chord in the G shape. 
But let's say you want to play an E minor chord, or let's say you want to play an E dominant 7 chord, or let's say you want to play an E major 7 chord, or any type of chord that has E as the root. We can use this same shape right here, this E major chord in the G shape, and that's just going to be our starting point. So you have your starting point, and then you can make little manipulations to the shape to create these other types of chords. So the cage system gets you the starting point. The cage system gets you to the point where you're like, okay, E major chord in the G shape, got it. That's where the cage system gets you. Having an understanding of, you know, different music theory concepts, that's where you can take this stuff to this next level, which is what we're going to be talking about right now. So in order to make these manipulations to your shape, you're going to need to know where your root, third, and fifth are. All right, those are the three notes that make up a major chord. A major chord consists of a root, three, and a five, or a one, a three, and a five. So no matter which cage shape you happen to be starting out with, you just have to know where your one, three, and five are found. So in the G shape, your one is here. That's your root. All right, so you have your one, you have your three, you have your five. One, three, five. And then you have a one up here. So in order to take a major chord and turn it into a minor chord, all you have to do is take the third and lower it by one half step. It then becomes what is known as a flat third or a minor third. So you can take your one. So it's not going to be a three. It's going to be a flat third now. And then your five. So your one, three, five becomes a one flat three, five. You do the same thing here. You have your one, three, and five. You have a one, your three, and your five. So you take your third, you lower it by one half step. So you have your one flat three, five. All right, so let's say that we want to play a major seven chord. So having an understanding of general music theory, you would know that a major seven chord formula is one, three, five, seven. And having an understanding of the basic rules of chord construction, you would know that if you need to, you can always drop the root or the one. It's the same thing. You can also always drop the fifth if you want to. So this, these chord construction rules, they really come in handy when you're playing extended chords, chords like 13 chords or something like that, chords that contain like six notes or seven notes. You only have five fingers, so it's literally impossible to play all of the notes of one of these extended chords. And that's where the rules of chord construction come into play. So if you need to, you can drop the root, or if you need to, you can drop the fifth. So I have a whole lesson about the rules of chord construction. I'll post a link to that below as well. Check that one out. But anyway, we're going to make a major seventh chord here, and I'm just going to drop the root because I'm allowed to do that. So um, I'm going to start out using this G shape. I'm just going to use these three notes right here. We have our one, we have our three, we have our five. So I need to get the seven in there somehow. So a major seven can always be found one half step below the one. So if that's my one, there's my seven. So I still have my five and three in place. So I have, and I have my 7. I'm just dropping the 1. So this is an E major 7 chord right here. So let's say that I want to play an E dominant 7 chord. Again, knowing the chord formula for a dominant 7 chord, you know it's a 1, 3, 5, flat 7. All right, that's the difference between a major 7 and a dominant 7 chord. It's the type of 7th that it is. That flat 7, it's going to be 1 less than the 7. All right, so it's going to be found one whole step below the 1. Again, we're going to use the same rules of chord construction. I'm going to drop the root because I'm allowed to do that. So I can start off with that same shape again. I have my 1, 3, 5. I know that this flat 7 is a whole step below the 1. So I'm going to play that note there, keeping my 5 and 3 in place. So this is an E dominant 7 chord. All right, so I'm going to give you three more examples here, and then I'm going to wrap this lesson up. So I want to do an E augmented chord. I want to do an E half diminished chord and an E fully diminished chord. Again, the cage system is not going to let you know what a half diminished chord is or what an augmented chord is. That's general music theory. The cage system gives you your starting point. The cage system is, okay, I want to play an E major chord in the G shape. There we go. There's my starting point. Taking things a step further beyond the cage system is where general music theory comes into play. So you're going to need to know that kind of stuff if you want to create these other types of chords. So let's look at an augmented chord. An augmented chord is a 1, 3, sharp 5. That's the chord formula for an augmented chord. So we're just going to use the same starting shape here. We have our 1, we have our 3, we have our 5. So I can sharpen the 5th. I can, uh, right there, I can do that. 
So that's an E augmented chord. All right, so now we're going to look at those two diminished chords. So a half diminished chord, the uh, chord formula is root, flat third, otherwise known as a minor third, flat fifth, flat seven. So again, we're going to start out here. We're going to start out with the same uh, three notes that we've been starting out. So we have a root, we have our third, that needs to be a flat third though. We have our fifth, that needs to be a flat fifth though. So that's your diminished triad right there. And then if I want to get that flat seven in there, what do we say about a flat seven? A flat seven can always be found one whole step below the root. So you have an E up here, which you could stretch your pinky to get. One whole step lower than that would be your flat seven. So now we have the four notes that make up this half diminished chord. If we want to make this chord into a fully diminished chord, the difference between a fully diminished chord and a half diminished chord is that the seventh is flattened by one additional half step in a fully diminished chord. So instead of a root, flat third, flat fifth, flat seven, which is the chord formula for a half diminished chord, it's going to be a root, flat third, flat fifth, double flatted seven. So we have our root, we have our flat third, we have our flat fifth, we have our flat seven. So just make that one half step lower up there on the E string, and this becomes a fully diminished chord now. Half diminished, fully diminished. All right, so that's the kind of stuff that you can do with the cage system. So the cage system is about chord shapes. That's what it's about. It is not about scale patterns. It is not about connecting scale patterns. It is not about dividing the fretboard up into five different positions. If you're at the point where you're trying to figure out how to connect the scale patterns together and you are looking into the cage system and you're getting confused, that is why, all right? It's about chords. All we did here was we said, I wanna play an E major chord. I already know how to play an E major chord like this. I already know how to play an E major chord like this. I already know how to play an E major chord like this. Is there any other shapes available? Of course there's other shapes available. That's where we came up with this shape. We played it in the G shape. It's called the G shape because it looks like a G chord down here. It's just, we rearranged our fingers, we added a bar, we slid the whole thing up, and that's how we played this E major chord in the G shape. From there, we then applied general music theory concepts, knowing about chord formulas and knowing about the rules of chord construction, how you're allowed to drop the root if you want to, things like that, general music theory stuff. We applied that to the caged shape, and then we came up with these other chords. All right, so that is what the cage system is for. Hopefully, I uh, hope to uh, clear that up for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.